waves crashing on the beach, the tide rolling in, and I've got a bracelet for a mermaid. It's who I am, a little bear, some sour fair, and some mystery, putting it all together, doing what I do. Hi, I'm Tamara Berg. I grew up in the water, swimming and playing on boats, so I designed a bracelet that reminded me of the sea. I call it the Mermaid Braid Bracelet. We're starting with three 22-inch lengths of 18-gauge permanent colored copper wire from Artbeads.com. I like working with this wire because it is a little bit softer to work with than sterling silver wire, and it comes in some really great colors. I think Artbeads has something like nine or 10 colors in the 18 gauge. If you move into even smaller gauges of the wire, there are lots more colors, so lots of choices there. We're gonna take our wire and fold it in the center to make a teardrop shape right in the middle. Now when we're working with this wire, the really important thing to remember is keeping the wires on one plane, not bundling them up in the center. It's gonna be really important as we move on with this project, so keep them all kind of flat and in one plane. Then get a piece of masking tape and wrap that around the teardrop shape that we've made. The interior diameter of this teardrop is about half an inch. It can be a little bit smaller if you want to. So wrap the masking tape around just to keep that secure. And then we're just taking a hand clamp from the hardware store and putting it right over the intersection of those six wires. Next, we're gonna unfold the wires and then form them into three groups of two wires, like this. At this point, you can take the hand clamp off. I take it off because it gets a little unwieldy for me, but if it keeps things grounded for you, you can keep the hand clamp in place. So now, we've got three sets of wires here the left, the center, and the right. And from this point, I'm going to refer to the wires as they are in the placement, with this being my left and this being my right. You don't have to remember, oh my gosh, where did I leave the right wire? Because whatever's on the right-hand side will be the right-hand side wire. So now we're gonna start our braid. So we start with the center wire and loop it over the left wire. And again, this is important where you keep your planes flat between the wires. Now we're just gonna repeat that same move three more times. So we have a total of four twists and you want these twists to be pretty tight. So one, two, three, and go with one more twist here. So we have four twists on our wire. So we take the right wire and cross it over the center wire so that now becomes the center wire. Then we're gonna repeat the twists on the right hand side and just under and over a total of four times. One, two, three and four. One, two, three, four. And now we make the wide curve on the left-hand wire. Cross it over to the center and it becomes the center. So I'm just gonna continue this same pattern as we're going with the four twists on one side and then the long twist on the other. Another great thing about this wire is that it is very forgiving. So if you have problems, one, two, three, four, if you have problems with it, if it gets a little twisted and out of place, it's very easy to reform. If you have a pair of nylon jaw pliers, they are great for straightening out this wire and just keeping it nice and smooth if you get little kinks in it. So we've got one, two, three. Now we have a big wave. Pull those through and now we've got the twists going on the right side. One, two, three, and four. Now at this point we want to measure the bracelet and see how long it's going. When we're measuring, you wanna measure from the outside of that loop and then go to the end of where you've got your wires wrapping. The hook of this bracelet is going to add about an inch to three quarters of an inch, so that helps us figure out how long we wanna make it. This bracelet can be anywhere from six and a quarter to eight inches long. It depends on how big you want to have it dangling on your wrist and how large your wrist is. So we are right at six inches right now, which is just perfect. So I'm going to start the hook. Watch it fall around me and shades so we have the twists on either side, 
And what I'm going to do is take the two wires on the right and the two wires in the center, and we're gonna bring those four together, and that's gonna begin our hook. Next, we take the wave wire from the left, and it's just going to wrap right around those four wires. And this you can do with your fingers. You can do it with pliers if you want, but as I said, this is really malleable wire, and it works really great for this. So I'm gonna loop that around about half a time more, and then just take the chain nose pliers, sort of flatten that out a little bit, and then cut off our excess. And again, with the chain nose pliers, just sort of flatten that little bit down so that everything's nice and smooth. Now, this is the outside of the bracelet, and the hook on this bracelet is going to go toward the inside. I like to put the hooks on the inside of bracelets because if they're on the outside, they catch on everything. They catch on your sleeve, they catch on your purse, they catch on that guy who's walking by, which might not be a bad thing sometimes. <laughs> so we're gonna put our hook on the inside. So these wires have become bundled again, and we do want them flat. So I'm taking the chain nose pliers and just flattening them out a little bit and straightening them so they're again all in one plane. And then we're just looping them around the finger. Now just take the wire cutters, cut those nice and straight, and there is our fancy hook. Now, because this hook is on the inside, you may want to file the ends off with a hand file. I find it really isn't that necessary, though, but if you want to be extra safe, you can do that. Now we're going to work on the loop part of the clasp and just take off that masking tape. So now we're working on the outside of the bracelet, and we have three loops here. What we're going to do is take that first loop in the center, the smallest one, pull it down toward the ground, and then we're just going to pull it out, give it a little twist, bring it over to the top of the bracelet, and there it makes a little curly cue. Okay, let me show you that again, just to make sure you got it. So we have our center loop here. We're gonna move that down, give it a little twist, move it around to the front, and there we have a little curly cue. Next, we're gonna do a curly cue with the largest of the remaining loops. So we take that largest loop and just cut it right down the middle. Then take your round nose pliers and we're gonna take the left one of those loops, bring it down, and bury the end in behind where we placed that first loop. I'm just gonna adjust that a little bit. There we go. So we have another little embellishment there. Now we take the round nose pliers again we're gonna form a final curly cue. Tighten this one pretty tight. Tighten it in, and then just use the chain nose pliers if you do need to flatten out a little bit. And there we have our final curly cues. Okay, the bracelet's nearly done. We just need to form it. And at this point, we're just going to mostly hand form, just create that little hook. Now, if you have a bracelet mandrel, this is the time to use it. And we're just gonna slip that bracelet right on. Make sure that the clasp portion is on the flatter part of the oval. And it forms the perfect oval. And there is our fabulous mermaid braid bracelet. Now I have some fantastic variations to show you. On this version of the bracelet, I just added some dangles to it with beads, and those are added onto the clasp portion, that last part where you cut. On this variation, I added some frosted and opalescent E-size beads, and those were added to the outside wire of the big wave as you're creating the braid. The twists on this bracelet really remind me of the waves, and the sea inspired me to make this bracelet. Think of what inspires you, and go out and make something beautiful. We'll see you next time. To create this project yourself, download this week's design guide. You'll get step-by-step -step instructions along with special make-it-your-own bonus tips and ideas.